Ravensburg. All right, folks. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, we talk about stories uh, that are particular to a given area, whether it's in New York where I am, you know, Elliot Spitzer, um, uh, 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 Wiener, Congressman Wiener, running for president, all that kind of stuff, because it, it transcends just the locality in which uh, it's occurring. It, it, it's uh, pertinent to the rest of the nation and what's going on. Here in New York State, uh, I think you're all going to want to hear about, and this, this story, just when I first heard about this, it just, I, 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 I blew my mind. But you know what? Am I shocked? Nothing shocks me anymore. But uh, our friend Governor Pataki, who's been on this show, is being sued by uh, convicted sex offenders. They want money because he locked them up um, in, in a, in a uh, facility after they finished uh, their time in the uh, in the slammer, as they say. Joining us now to explain all of this is Jim McGuire, Governor Pataki's former chief counsel, judge, and assistant Manhattan DA, uh, now a practicing attorney. Hey, Jim, good to see you. Nice to be here, Steve. All right, move a little closer and and tell me, explain this to me. How it how it? Well, first of all, explain what the the uh, inmates who are apparently running their own asylum uh, are claiming and uh, how Governor Pataki fits into this. They're claiming that an initiative the governor launched in September of 2005, pursuant to which certain convicted sex abuse offenders, violent sexual predators under the New York law, um, were evaluated by physicians to determine whether they had mental illnesses that presented a danger to the community and whether they were in need of, of, of treatment. And those who were evaluated by two physicians and then were sent from the state prison before they were going to be released, just before they were going to be released, so that they would not present a danger, they would be, remain committed, if a third physician agreed with the first two physicians. And they then had a right to ask for a hearing promptly thereafter. And the claim is that their federal due process rights were violated by the governor's initiative and that the governor and other state officials should be personally liable for millions of dollars, including punitive damages. All right, so this, when you say the governor's initiative, is this, this, this was the law? What the governor did was, for many years, sought passage in the legislature of a bill that would expressly authorize exactly this. And don't tell me Sheldon Silver held it up. Would not allow it for a vote. Yeah. It passed in the Senate yeah. many, many years, sometimes unanimously, and it would never go to a vote. At, at some point in June of 2005, a convicted uh, uh, sex offender was paroled from prison and murdered a woman in, the, in, a, in a mall up in White Plains. I remember that, yeah. And in the aftermath of that, the governor developed this program. When an assemblyman said, there's no need to pass a statute, the governor has the authority on his own. The administration looked into it, I wasn't there at the time, carefully evaluated and determined that under the existing provisions of the mental hygiene law, which allow anybody who is, has a serious psychiatric illness, who's a danger to himself or others, and in need of psychiatric care, to be confined in a civil institution under the same circumstances, with two physicians examining them, and then a third, and, a third, right. and with, a, with a right to a hearing thereafter. Yeah, yeah. And so that, that, that's what these men, uh, how many convicts are we talking about here? Well, there, were, there are six who are suing, uh, six who are suing, whose re records, needless to say, are absolutely dreadful. And are they still in, in the uh, facility, or are they no, out? No, no, they're, they're out. They're, they're out now. Okay, so, so they're out, they're, they're convicted sex offenders, they were uh, put into the, uh, this facility uh, 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 right before the end of their term. And exactly. they remained there. I mean, we're in 13 now. This was in 05 at some point. So they, they remained there for a number of years. A couple of couple years, A couple of years, I okay. And, uh, and they've decided to sue the state and the governor personally or just the governor personally? The state and the governor the, and many other executive branch officials who were involved in the implementation of the program. And where are we in this, in this case? The trial is going on right now in uh, federal court in Manhattan. And and when what's so so what 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 could what are the possible outcomes here? Either I mean the suit obviously was not thrown out by the judge uh, before the trial. No, uh, the, the judge who I, I have to say is an eminent uh, jurist, Judge uh, Rakoff, concluded that the plaintiffs did state a claim, a due process uh, a claim, uh, did not rule on the merits of it, but also ruled that the governor was not entitled to qualified immunity 
under the federal constitution, executive branch officials in, in states and municipalities are entitled to some deference, recognizing that they must make difficult decisions sometimes about whether things are constitutional or not. So on, based on that, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. why, why did the judge decide the way he did, that, they, that, the, that the governor was not entitled to this immunity? Uh, the the essence of it it's it's complicated right. as I'm sure you can right. well, you can read us like ten preambles <laughs> right but I, but I think I can cut to the yeah, chase yeah. on it and yeah. tell you that the, the core of the ruling was that these inmates did not have a hearing to determine whether they were uh, had psychological illnesses and were a threat to others before they were sent to the mental institution now of course under the mental hygiene law which the governor uses as a model persons off the street are put in the mental that, don't have that okay don't have that right so they before they had the evaluation of the three doctors they were sent to the facility no they were they were they were examined oh, okay. by two physicians yeah and then the third and then a third when they got there okay but there was no sort of judicial hearing. oh oh okay okay gotcha that, that's the the linchpin and so the, that's and that's why the judge ruled that the, the governor is not uh, immune from this Right. The executive branch officials enjoy what's called qualified immunity. Okay. And so they are protected from personal liability if they take actions, even if they violate constitutional rights, as long as, as long as that right was not clearly established under federal law. And needless to say, Governor Pataki agrees with Attorney General Schneiderman and his top lawyers that, one, there was no due process violation, and in any event, it was not clearly established that the program that the governor initiated was a violation of the constitutional rights. We're talking to Jim McGuire, Governor Pataki's former chief counsel, judge, assistant Manhattan DA, and uh, current attorney here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Uh, was this program uh, continued after uh, Governor Pataki left office by uh, Spitzer and Patterson and now Cuomo, or discontinued? The New York State Court of Appeals eventually, prior to this federal lawsuit, right. a claim was brought by a group of, uh, of these same sex offenders, and the New York Court of Appeals ruled not on a constitutional issue. It ruled that between two statutory mechanisms that the governor chose, the one he did under the mental hygiene law and a provision under the corrections law, the governor should have chosen the correction law one. Okay. And that brought the program to a halt. Which would have modified the program somewhat. It, 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 it would have required modifications yeah. to the program. That the New York State's highest court did not rule that the governor had acted unconstitutionally in any way. It simply said, as a matter of state law, the court, the, the governor went the wrong path. A lower intermediate appellate court here in Manhattan unanimously ruled that the governor had made the right choice. Okay. So, all right. So, what what what's the worst outcome here? And, and by the way, who's representing these uh, these convicted sex uh, felons? Uh, is this like an ACLU? motivated uh, suit or not it's not the american civil liberties union but it's a it's an or it's a, okay. a law firm that specializes okay. in bringing claims on behalf of uh, uh constitutional claims on behalf so of worst case scenario here um how much could governor pataki be held liable for millions of dollars not only not only million dollars for the ostensible deprivation of their liberty interests and i should add steve that many of these inmates never even asked for the hearing that they were entitled to okay. within three days of, of being confined in the institution. Okay, right. Millions of dollars in liability for each of them, and they are also seeking punitive damages. And what's the likelihood in your view? I mean, I know it's an ongoing case. I like to be optimistic, and I like to believe that the jury will understand that the governor made the, the correct decision. I think the citizens of this state will know and believe that the governor faced with the, the prospect of more and more people with an extremely high recidivism rate, including abusing young children, should be evaluated and every reasonable step taken to keep them in if they ha have mental illnesses. Are there other such programs uh, around the country in other states? The, the, the governor's uh, statutory initiative, which right. was blocked in the, in the assembly right. for many years, was modeled on a Kansas statute that the United States Supreme Court upheld, and many other states have followed it. Okay. Now, after the Governor Pataki left office, a Democratic governor was able to persuade the Speaker 
to do the legislation. Was that Spitzer or Patterson? Yes, Spitzer. Governor Spitzer. I've heard of him. Yes. Yeah, black socks, hats, <laughs> this is the whole thing. All right, so, 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 so they did pass it? Yes. So subsequently it was passed in a post-Pataki uh, um, um, administration. Yes. So it is the law now? Yes, it is so, Okay, the law all right. So that, so if it had been around it would have, uh, at that time, if Sheldon Silver, who is the Speaker of the Assembly uh, here in the, the uh, state legislature in New York and has been for, what, about 75 years, <laughs> um, he, he wouldn't bring it up. Um, so, um, so the governor was really faced with a terrible problem yeah. as a result of the intransigence. Yeah, you let of these the people out on the streets or do something. And then an assemblyman says, "You don't need a statute. You have the authority to do it on your own." Governor's office looked into it. Right. His lawyers, the lawyers for the Department of Corrections, the lawyers for the Department of Mental Health, all evaluated and said, "You know what? We think that the assemblyman is right." And so they launched the initiative. And now right. we have a lawsuit. All right. Well, what's the anticipated uh, time? I mean, uh, trial-wise, as far as uh, you know, uh, we always get predictions when it's a, a, a trial that we're, we're watching nationally. Uh, it could go three weeks, five weeks, eight weeks, two weeks. What, what we're in the middle Ex of it. How much longer do you excellent think? Excellent question. But I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day okay. of it. I can't imagine that it would. The trial will take much more than a couple of more weeks. All but, right. Uh, well, w when it when it happens, we'll either have you back when the verdict comes in, and if they allow the governor to uh, weigh in on this. We'd love to hear from him. It'd be a pleasure to come back, Steve. Thank you. Paul, uh, I'm sorry, Paul. I know Paul McGuire. Jim McGuire. I also worked with a Jim McGuire at WABC back in the 80s. It wasn't you. 